Welcome to the Journey to Gold Zone podcast. I'm Amy Begley, and today my guest is Reed Buchanan for a World Athletics Cross Country preview. And we're so excited because we're traveling tomorrow. So, are you packed yet? Uh, get in there. You know, the nice thing about the uh, the the kit is like it's it's kind of already packed, right? Like you just gotta maybe uh, add in a few accessories of your own, and uh, you're good. You know that you get taken care of. There's so many things I want to talk to you about today, but my favorite probably is the fact that I saw you over a year ago and you're like, yep, I'm retired. But I think since you told me that you've now made two cross teams. So explain this. I'm retired, but I'm making international teams. Um, I, Well, I think one, I just, I, I like cross country. Uh, it's, it, I feel like it's the only thing that hasn't really changed in the last you know, since uh, 2016, when some things changed uh, involving the sport. But uh, to me, uh, I think no matter what you have on your feet, grass is going to be tough. And, um, you know, and I, that's why I got into the sport. I just like, I like to compete and I like um, getting the most of my, out of myself. And so uh, it just happens that I guess I, uh, there are two world teams back to back. Um, and yeah, here we are for round two. So since this is round two, what things did you learn last year that you're going to take into this, this world cross country? Uh, last year, um, we ended up traveling, I think six days out, uh, just by choice. And cause it's Australia pretty far, but that morning I raced a 10 K on the roads and then did the whole, um, whatever it was like 18 hour travel. And then uh, a couple days later, got really sick. So right away, I'm going to, I think I'm going to respect the travel a little bit more. Um, and you know, maybe, uh, because it, 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 it kind of just ruins everything. Um, and I, I want to, uh, be able to go into this um, and give it my best. And uh, I know that I probably could have been a little bit more cautious with uh, the the long travel and being exposed to a bunch of uh, different types of people along the way. So this is already going to start off a, a better race than last year. I Yeah, I hope. Well, let's, uh, I'm trying, you know, still have time here to get sick, uh, but already, already starting to um, load up on some defense immunity type stuff. So yeah, that's, that's the goal one. So, and, you know, and I think, um, from there can really start to, uh, maybe have my own goals. Um, once I make it to the starting line, hundred percent. And what are goal, what are your goals for this, for this race? Uh, I, I know there's, uh, some really, really talented runners at the front. Um, but I also know that there's going to be a lot of people who maybe try and go with them. And that, and that's cross country across the board. I mean, every uh, level from high school to the NCAA um, to here. And I've always had my best races running within myself and picking people off. And I think, um, you know, with a loop course like that, you can, you can start to do that and, and have, uh, almost like a track, like have an idea of a track race, have an idea of a certain point when you want to start moving. Uh, and I, you know, that's, that's, I think the most fun you can ever have racing. World cross country is a lot like NCAA cross country with the number of people and, and the talent. It's, it's different than most races that people run, you know, like road races and stuff. It kind of gets really small, really quick. You know, what advice would you give to you know, the new people that haven't done this kind of big race or haven't done a big race in a really long time. What's the advice for getting on that start line, knowing there's a lot of people, a lot of talent? Just another race. Um, you know, you, you somehow got to this point doing something right. Uh, and so, you know, I think the worst thing you can do is um, treat this any differently. You know, go through your same routine uh, and expect it to hurt just as much, but then also maybe expect to have a little bit more adrenaline because, um, you know, I remember the, the call room in Australia and there was a moment of like, wow, this is, this is it. Like, this is the biggest stage. 
and everyone's here. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of people showed up last year and I don't know, I know top of my head, uh, Uganda's sending their A squad again. Uh, I know, you know, Kipalimo, Chapter, those guys are as good as it gets. So I'm assuming there's going to be, um, some really good talent in this, in this field as well, but uh, yeah, the worst thing you could do is try and do something different. Um, you know, just, just go, go run simple, right? That's the best part of it. You know, just put on your shoes and go run. But I had another fun conversation with you recently about shoes. So sometimes just putting on the shoes and go running is, is not the simplest thing. You and I had a great conversation recently at gate about super shoes and, you know, and, trying to figure that out with training and racing and and where are you at now with the super shoes and training and racing if if we want to go uh, back and tell the story about gate yeah i um uh, so i guess it's 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 clear that um uh, everyone's using them and if you want to compete at a very high level you're going to have to use them I'm uh, sort of in a different spot with my running where this isn't my main thing anymore. And I want to get back to a point where um, I guess I just feel uh, normal again. And, you know, super shoes have been great in terms of recovery, but I definitely think it changes the way that I had ran the 24 years or whatever before that and i and slowly over the last few years um some things just started to not feel good when i was wearing them um just the longer i wore them like marathons and that of cramping issues that i've never had before and so i am trying to transition back but you know it's like it's like a weaning yourself off of something you're addicted to you especially your body was it got used to uh, not having to take pounding and um, yeah, so I tried to I tried to race in normal flats and it kind of felt like I uh, blew my legs out, um, but that's okay. Like again, I'm still trying. But the good thing is, my cross country prep has felt normal because again, it's on grass and um, it, it doesn't matter what you're wearing on your feet. Uh, so. I'm pretty excited. And, and, you know, that's kind of how I felt with us cross as well. Um, the, the best workouts I had were preparing for that. And, um, I was able to compare that to some of the prep I was trying to do for the marathon trials and, you know, that stuff wasn't going that well. And the only difference really was the surface I was running on and the shoes that I was wearing. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm excited that your prep's going well for cross. That's, that is good. That's good news. But second of all, the people that don't understand the difference between training in super shoes and regular shoes, what's the biggest thing that you've noticed? Just the residual soreness is not there. Um, and, you know, I think that's, again, why, why it became so addicting to at, at first. And, you know, I think I started regularly training and then um, in 2020, uh, yeah, I, I was sponsored uh, by On Running then, and they, they hadn't really had one yet. Um, and I think later in that year, maybe they came out with their first one. Um, but, you know, once you uh, start having these workouts where nothing hurts and you're not getting as fatigued, it, you're going to want to keep wearing these without really thinking about long term effects. Right. And, and that's that's the thing with any sort of uh yeah I don't, I don't want to compare it to a drug but you know that's kind of the idea right it's like who cares what's going to happen later because right now this feels amazing and then the next workout out it's like okay i can i can do more because i'm not getting that same sort of um i guess beat up that the the, the lightweight shoes before used to bring you which was fine like I, yeah, I think having soreness is a good thing. It, it's been understood to be a good thing because that means that you are breaking down and then rebuilding muscle. Um, and so now that you're not doing that, what's actually happening? I don't know. And I, I don't think anyone knows. And that's kind of going to be the 
TBD, you know, in the next decade. We're, we're going to see, hopefully, continuing to see great times, but without um, repercussions. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see uh, what the knees look like of this new generation versus the old generation, right? What is What does yeah. the joints look like? It's, it's going to be fun to compare those notes, I think. Right. And, you know, the thing about force from a physics standpoint is it doesn't disappear. Um, it's got to go somewhere. So, yeah, we're, we're, I guess we'll just find out where uh, eventually by whatever gets um, hurt or <laughs> uh, seems to be a common um, overuse injury that pops up. But your career has been fun to watch. I, I love looking at your, some of your stuff. You are the, what, fastest Kansan in multiple events. That's what I read in a couple different places. So now you're in Cal- now you're in California, you know, sophomore engineer. That's your main thing. That's why you say you're a retired runner. Back, back in Kansas City, though, recently. Oh, okay. So now, oh, so you just moved back. I, yeah, I uh, moved back in October. So. Okay. And really starting to connect with the local running scene here, which, you know, I didn't really know existed that much. Um, and it's kind of uh, been fun to do that and, you know, have some ideas for getting the city more involved in the sport. And I feel like I'm in a place now where I'm able to do that uh, and kind of give back. I love that. I love giving back. What's the first thing you want to do or what's the best way you think you can get involved? Like if somebody else wants to go back, you know, home, and get their running community involved, what's the first thing you would tell them to do or what have you been doing? Well, I uh, use a high school track to do a lot of my stuff in the evening and I'll go kind of when their practice is ending. And um, so shout out to Shawnee Mission East High School. Uh, That's not the high school I went to, but I remember them as being there in the same class. And you know, I, I think back to when I was a high schooler and I didn't really have access to someone with as much experience as I have. And I just want to be able to answer any questions that a high school runner has um, comes to just training in general or getting to the next level, um, you know, whatever, whatever that is, if it's, if it's junior college or, um, you know, if they, they eventually want to try and, uh, you know, make it to where it's profession. Um, yeah, I, I just want to be a resource. Uh, and so on top of that, I really like to um, create like a race that's not necessarily sanctioned, but more of like a time trial. Um, Cause I have this, there's this park here that has this cool track surface around the outside of it, but it's hilly. And then, so like one loops, I think a little bit over 2K, like I think it's like a, a mile and a third of a mile or something. So it's random. And I'd love to create like a like an all-time list of just one loop around that. And the, so it would have been the way that uh, cycling part of the tour they do, they do the trial or the, or the uh, time trial and just create like a, a leaderboard for maybe the summer months and um, the fastest one I'll, I'll give them, I don't know, 400 bucks or something. Is that legal? I, I think it's legal now, but. Does Strava already have that though? Is there already a segment or something on there? Right. So that could be like my, uh, like you have to upload it to Strava and that's how we'll keep track. And you have to post between, you know, say that another state track meet ends in May. So we'll say like June to the, maybe just June and July. Uh, until the first day of school in August or something and say, you have until then, you know, go do it, go rip it one day, see what you can do. Um, just stuff like that. I, I have ideas, I guess. I love saying. it. You're out, you're always full of the good ideas. I think though. Always thinking. So what questions does this generation have for you? The weird thing. And, you know, I kind of thought I had a little bit of access, at least compared to, um, you know, people who are 10 to 20 years older than me, but the weird thing about now is they know what every other single high schooler who's better than them is doing. And I don't think that's good. I, like, you know, I, I, it's, it's very hard to explain, you know, why um, you know, there are kids running so fast. And 
how it, it might not be the best for them or especially for you as I'm talking to you. Um, and so what I like to do is just try to tell them, hey, you got you to gotta stay off. You got to stay off message boards. You got to stay off whatever the high school. I think it's like Dysta maybe now still, um, you know, stop worrying about competition. You're probably never going to race right now. Like there's just no point. Um, and try to try to, you know, let's, let's, let's start, let's start small. Let's, 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 let's um, you know, focus on people you're going to race and, and then kind of move out from there. If, if that becomes even relevant. I think one of my least favorite comments as a coach was athletes coming up and saying, well, my buddy is doing. Yeah. Like your internet buddy is doing X, Y, and Z. All right. Yeah. And who knows, right? Not everything on the internet's real. Um, so and again, this is another thing like, yeah, you could have seen, you know, you see one YouTube workout video. I'm like, whoa, whoa what did they do? The eight weeks before that, because until you know that, um, then you really don't have any concept of what that workout means. So just, just things like that, that, you know, and I, I think if I was in their shoes, I would be doing the same thing. Right. And that's, that's good. It's like, it comes from a competitive standpoint, I think. Um, but again, you gotta just focus on you because everyone's path is going to be different. And the person who follows their own path usually ends up doing pretty well. And what started your path? What, who got you into running or what got you into running? Picture this. It's June, 2008. So what's going on? Olympic mm -hmm. trials, right? Never watched Olympic trials before. Never would have cared to, except there is a guy named Christian Smith who uh, spent his collegiate years in Manhattan, Kansas, because he went to Kansas State. Uh, he grew up uh, in a very, very small Kansas town. Um, but anyway, I was told, hey, you know, this guy's in the trials. He's, he's pretty good. Um, he doesn't have the time, but uh, you should you should watch. I was like, yeah, that's, that's fine. I, I was triple jumping in track at that point. So I'm like, okay, I have an interest in track. This is cool. And so watching him go through the rounds and, uh, you know, get through and then get to the final and then watching that race, which is probably one of the greatest trials races of all time, um, diving at the line, getting the time, uh, you know, in that race. Uh, I think it would inspire anyone, but for me to be at an age where I could start, you know, um, distance running, because at the time I was playing other sports, uh, it, it just kind of, you know, it, it was it. Like, I was like, man, I want whatever that was. Like, whatever that made me feel, I want to try and feel it. That race was amazing. And the stadium just erupted. I'm almost surprised the stadium didn't fall down, how crazy and loud it was in there and outside the stadium because they had this whole village outside. I mean, it was, yeah, if you didn't get excited from that race, <laughs> you were not going to like track and field because that was full. You better track pulse, right? Like that. And just like, you know, you, you find out all the stuff later about how he, uh, you know, he was training with gags and it wasn't working. And then you got the, I think he had the, his appendix burst at some point in that season. And so he wasn't able to get the time. And it's just like, stuff like that, you got to wonder, it's like, man, you were going to become an Olympian that day, no matter what, right? It's like, that was, that was etched in stone somewhere for all of this to happen. And yet it's still happened on the day and i think that's you know if if anyone ever asked you know why does the u.s have this trial like why the trials when we have if you have three really good runners why why do you even have to have it's like that that is why and you will never have that feeling that everyone got when watching that if everyone was just selected beforehand it definitely takes a lot of the drama and the history and, and just what we love about track and field is just having it on that day and just giving it a go. Right. And right. it's, and it's people that stay in the sport, right. Cause he could have stopped with all the different barriers that he had along the way. And, 
you know, for you as well, right? I mean, you could have, you could have stopped a few different times, I'm assuming, but what kept you going in the sport then? I think I, <laughs> I kind of think that I just, I dug a hole so deep that instead of trying to get back out, I would rather try to figure out if there's another side. You know, like, it's like, man, you've already done this much. You might as well keep trying. And then at some point, maybe, and, and you know, I, I don't know if it'll ever come. I don't think there'll ever be a race where I'm like, that's it. That that did it. Like, you know, I don't ever want to do this again. Um, but I think I'll be able to recognize when uh, I, I'm not competitive anymore or I'm not able to have a personal best in anything anymore. Uh, but I don't think I'm there yet. And so I think that's, that's kind of it. And, you know, I, I'm realistic about it being a profession. Like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to empty the bank account to try and pursue this. Uh, but I do think that if you want, uh, something bad enough, you can figure out a way to get it done. Um, even while working another job and I'm still there, I still enjoy it. I, you know, it's, it's kind of like one of those things that um, I think takes the edge off of life. It's like just going out and, you know, I, didn't, I, I, I don't like easy runs at all because it doesn't really do it for me. Like, but you go out there and you, you rip a hard session and that, that metallic taste in your mouth and you're like, man, that, that makes you feel alive. That feeling alive is always good. Um, so you're a software engineer for your day job, right? Have you always done that throughout your career or is it something that you're like, all right, I can't one, I need something else, but two, like, are you someone that needs, needs that extra outlet? Uh, I think I'm figuring that out. Uh, you know, I, I didn't think I needed it when I had enough financial support to just do this full time, but you know, maybe I was replacing those hours with, um, either, doing trying to do more um you know more running or more lifting or more something else that could have been detrimental um uh, but i was also spending more time thinking about running and i don't know that might be detrimental as well um i think you know software engineering is nice because it is something you can do from home and for the most part you can do it on the road um so traveling is not as big a deal and I, I have enjoyed, uh, knowing that I get to stop this day job and go get to do a run. Whereas before it was, that was the only thing I had to do each day. Um, and I, yeah, there were times where I felt like I was really just wasting being alive. Right. Cause it's like, you're, you're supposed to rest, but resting is is kind of not living in a way like you, you don't really feel like you're doing anything um so i think i i, I truly think it will be um good but it's it's relatively new so we're still figuring it out very cool i have found when i was coaching i found there were some athletes that definitely needed something else and then there were some athletes that couldn't do both <laughs> it was like all right it, both is not for you um but I think everyone's just wired differently. And I think when you find that perfect balance, then it, I think it, everything just goes well. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. So being back in Kansas, what are you most looking forward to for this uh, Kansas spring and summer in the Midwest being back here? Uh, I can say for sure that I'm ready for spring to be over because I forgot how windy every single day is. I mean, it's just, it's just nonstop. Like I feel like, 15 is a good day now, uh, 15 miles an hour. Like, and it's kind of funny because I feel like in high school, it just didn't matter. And I think I've gotten maybe a little bit too soft and kind of need to channel more of that. But, uh, you know, you, you have to understand that um, if you're receiving workouts, uh, it's probably, you know, for the perfect day and it's just not going to happen. There are going to be some bad, well, not bad, but, uh, reps that are slower. And, um, I do know that the one day that it's not windy, it's going to feel great. So it's kind of like some added resistance, I suppose. Uh, but 
I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, the summer months because I like hot, humid running. I think everything just feels good. It's like applying a heat pack to all your joints right away, you know? Like, and maybe that's just my age talking, but nothing feels better than, than getting out on a nice, warm, humid summer day, you know, early in the morning. So the sun's not crushing me yet, but the air is just thick and warm, like a blanket. I can remember wanting to be dropped off and just running with the wind at my back at some points for some things and being like, all right, I'm just going to use the wind today and go just one direction and have somebody pick me up because some days you just, you're just done with it. I know. Yeah. I need to, I need to figure that out somehow. Maybe there's some sort of public transportation I could take back. Or... So who's coaching you now? You said when you get workouts. Uh, ben True, who some may know um, as a, as an athlete. Uh, he has started a group uh, that has all skill levels up in New Hampshire, Vermont area. He lives right on the border, so I, you know, I never really know. Um, I guess you just kind of claim both at that point. Uh, but yeah, he, and he's also now coaching um, some professional type runners, and we talked about it, and it, it, I'm not paying him. I want to make that clear. Um, so the guy's just doing it out of his out of his good heart and and hopefully learning and taking um, some chances with some certain things. And, and then I'll give him the feedback and help him become a better coach. Uh, while at the same time, uh, getting training from someone who I know knows how to train a lot and do it well. So what are you most looking forward to going to Serbia then? Running, I am looking forward to hopefully a normal cross country course. You know, I think it's just going to be like grass, maybe, maybe a little mud. Um, but, you know, no, like straight up, straight down or gimmicky tires, things like that. And then that, let's just go, let's just go run on grass. Um, and then non-running, I know there's a Tesla museum there. And for you, uh, maybe younger kids, I'm talking about uh, Nikolai Tesla, not the uh, electric car because he grew up there and then i've heard that there's you know a lot of cool architecture so always always fun to see you know because the u.s doesn't have a lot of that well anything else you want to do a shout out for instagram wise or anything else you know give a shout out to anything before we you know close up and go uh go pack for serbia um not that i can think of uh Shout out to you for uh, ever since you've taken over this this position, you've been really doing a lot of good things. So excited and grateful to have you in this position. Um, I, I think a lot of people have said that. So I speak for not only them, but myself as well. Oh, well, thanks. And um, I think when I was thinking back to it, one of my first senior teams that I was on was a uh, Pan Ams in Lima in 2019, and you were the silver medalist in the 10,000. Yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah, that, that was like if I could think back to having fun while racing, that probably would have been you know one of them that, that comes to mind. Just a fun, fun city. Um, I do remember just being wet all the time. All the time. <laughs> it was <laughs> so bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it kind of adds to the to the lore of it, um, and yeah, that was that was a fun trip. It'll be our second trip. Hope for uh, you know a little less wet, but just as fun. Ah, uh, well, Reed, I'm looking forward to this trip with you, and hopefully, this uh, preview for World Athletics Cross Country will get people interested in uh, in tuning in and and watching how the U.S. does. I'm excited for you guys. Yeah, what do, what do we got? It's uh, gonna be very early in the morning. Yeah, I think we're six hours ahead by then, I think. Five or six. So yeah, so if you like okay. it. So junior races will be pretty early, but I think the senior races are manageable, you know. Yeah. Get a cup of coffee, throw yeah. it on. After five AM, I'm pretty sure. For at least yeah. well, for here. Oops, it's gonna be a little bit for California, eh. But for Kansas and Indiana, we're good. California, they yeah. may have to get up a little early. You know, they got they can watch it later. All right. Well, Reed, thank you so much. And good luck. Thanks. See ya.